This is Joel, as you are live and you may begin the meeting. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Shelton Board of Education special meeting, virtual meeting via Zoom. It is our budget workshop number four. Today is Monday, January 31st, 2022, and it is 6.01 p.m. Special notice about procedures for this electronic meeting. Pursuant to the governor's executive order number 7B, there will not be a physical location for this meeting. This meeting will be held electronically and live streamed on the Shelton Public Schools YouTube channel. The link to the live stream will be published on our district website and Facebook page immediately prior to the start of the meeting. The meeting agenda and minutes will be available at sheltonpublicschools.org. All right, call to order, please, Mrs. McCune. Sure. Roll call. Joseph Pagliero. Excused. Excused. Okay. Um, Lorraine Rosner. Here. Kate Kutash. Here. Diana Meyer. Here. Patty Moonen. Here. James Orizetti. Of him is excused as well. Carl Rizzo. Uh, here. Amy Romano. Here. Kathy Yolish. Here. And the minutes will reflect in attendance Ken Serenage, Carol Pinozo, Todd Heffelfinger, and Kristen Santilli. Okay. Um, and and just for the record, um, did you get did you get any email from Mr. Orizetti, Mrs. McCune? I did not. Superintendent. Okay. Well, well, um, for future reference, if anybody is going to not be able to attend, I would appreciate if we get an email stating that so they can be excused either to the secretary for the board, the superintendent, or myself. Thank you. With that, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved, Madam Chair, Kay Kutesh. Okay, motion made by Kay Kutesh. Second, please. Second, second by Lorraine by Rosner. Yeah. Okay, seconded by Lorraine Rosner. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention motion carries on uh, item number three agenda items cafeteria athletics and instruction. I will turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you, Mrs. Yolish. Uh, again, I'd like to just remind the board of the process by which we agreed upon to do to do the development of the budget. This is budget workshop number four. Um, there is no uh, voting or any any action items on tonight's agenda. Again, this is the last evening where, where administration will present um, possible recommended increases or decreases necessarily in the budget. Um, so we can formulate a, a final budget recommendation, uh, which will be our task to present to you on Thursday for budget workshop number five. So on Thursday night, um, based on all these different workshops and the feedback that I've been receiving um, from board members, we will put together uh, a budget to be discussed a recommended budget to be discussed and voted upon on Thursday. And tonight is the last one of these workshops. Um, we will be covering cafeteria, athletics and instruction, which are the last three um, major categories of the budget. Before I turn it over to Todd, who will be speaking um, about cafeteria and athletics, I just had sent the board an updated um, spreadsheet on the enrollment piece. I'm gonna share the screen and speak to it. Um, based on a request from board members, they also wanted to talk about position eliminations um, relative to the enrollment. So let me just share the screen so we can all see it. And then I will speak to what we're seeing. So uh, this particular um, item was presented on our first night where I talked about the enrollment and the decreases we've, we've had over the years. Uh, relative to where we currently are. And this is a current update. Um, we are now with the enrollment of, we are 56 um, students over last year. Um, this was our special ed totals we talked about. Those numbers have not changed. 
The percentage of special ed has not changed. Um, what is added to there are these two columns. Um, one is talked about position eliminations and one is talked about position uh, created. Um, let me explain what position eliminations mean. And we only have the data to go back for the last five years. I couldn't find information um, or at least in a timely manner to, to be able to produce anything beyond 2016. So starting with 2017, 18, what you're seeing is positions that have been eliminated from the budget. Um, that does not necessarily equate in all cases uh, layoffs. Um, that could mean that someone was retiring and as a cost savings, the board decided to eliminate the position instead of filling it. Um, there, were, there has also been throughout the years restructuring um, within the organization. Um, as many of you know, who were a part of the board when I took over a year ago, we did some restructuring in central office and eliminated some positions. Um, and then there were some years where there were actual um, definitive layoffs where we cut positions. So position elimination um, is means that there was a position that existed in the budget at one time um, that, that incurred a cost on the general budget and that position no longer exists. Um, it also, just so you understand, position elimination are for all salaried positions. We're not just talking teachers here. We are talking teachers, admins, paraprofessionals, secretaries, any, any position that appeared in a salary line item, um, these were the totals we went. So if we go back to 2017 and 18, and I apologize for not being able to produce information beyond these years. Um, in 2017, 18, we eliminated 15 positions from the budget. Um, no new positions were created that year. The following year, an, an additional, this is not accumulative, this is uh, additional, you know, this is addition, an additional 10 positions were, were eliminated. Um, the year after that, no new positions were, were created. The next year we eliminated 18 positions from the budget, no new positions were created. Um, and then 2021, which was the first year that, that some of you were on the board, 23.5 um, positions were eliminated from the budget that year. Um, that was the year uh, Dr. Smith was the principal, uh, was the superintendent. Um, where we eliminated several teams from the intermediate school and so on. There was a lot of eliminations that year. Uh, only two positions were created that year. And those two positions were in a direct effect of um, so many positions being laid and, and somewhat onto the restructure. Um, as you know, we had two positions um, and I'll give an example. We had two supervisors in um, the Office of Teaching and Learning one got eliminated, we created a director, you know, so that's one of the positions out of the two. Um, and then last year, we, we eliminated two, uh, 10 more positions. And again, last year was the first year uh, in all of these years where we did not include any layoffs. Um, prior to last year, uh, all these positions totaled here um, include layoff costs and, and un unemployment expenses for, for the board. Um, we did eliminate 10 positions last year, we also created 10.5 positions, um, but I do put a little side note here, and I think it's reflective of some of these increases. Out of the 10.5 positions, six of those positions um, are, are specifically focused on service hours relative to special education. And when I said these are not just teachers, um, many of these six positions are paraprofessionals and special ed tutors that had to be created after we eliminated um, the 10 positions that existed. And again, you see a reflection of 10.5. I will remind the board of like last year, um, we had an athletic director that got eliminated. It got replaced with a part-time athletic coordinator. So that's where you're kind of seeing some offset with half-time positions. But um, this was requested of me to the board to kind of line item uh, position eliminations. And so I wanted to share that updated data before we begin tonight. I will stop sharing my screen because I saw that a hand was raised and this way I can see who's raising their hand. Yes, Mrs. Meyer. Okay, so looking at this, Ken, I just did the math quickly. You're saying a total of 64 positions have been eliminated over the last five years. Did I do the math correctly, Todd and um, Ken? I can do an auto sum right now. I didn't total that, but I would assume that your math. I netted it out. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't do the net because I just did an yeah. the first column. So um, yeah, because the total eliminated would be seven, 76.5. 76 uh, 
Yes. Yeah, but um, a net of yeah. 64 positions in five years. Okay, again, I just want to reiterate as things get swirled around in the public to everybody that we all have the correct numbers. So, and I know we talk all the time about um, enrollment shifts and making adjustments to staff. And that's why I think this was asked of me to kind of point out some of the reductions that we've had. And, and these are the positions that had been reduced over the years. Um, last year, again, I think uh, it was a, a kudos to this board and the efforts that we did in working with the city that we did not lay off a single person um, last year and we still were able to um, eliminate some positions. Um, although it's 10 positions eliminated and 10 position 10.5 were created, there was still a cost savings there. So you have to remember that we eliminated administrative and teaching positions, but then added tutor and para positions um, at less of a cost. Uh, and the other thing is too, um, this does not account for any positions that were added to the budget um, based off of grants, because this, we're, we're just talking about money associated with the general budget, because that's what we're working on this evening. Um, you all are aware that we added um, several staff members in the support services, such as social workers, psychologists, and school counselors this past year. That doesn't play into the 10 because all of that money was um, through uh, the ARP ESSER grant. Mrs. Jolis, do you have a question? You're muted, Mrs. Jolis. Okay. Now I'm okay. All right. Um uh, Ken, you know, my, my concern, and I'm sure you're going to address this in, in, in either today or on Thursday. Um, we see the, the, the special ed population going up. Um, and, and my concern is, as I, I think I've stated a couple of times previously is, um, I don't, I don't remember quite if it's how many years behind, if a student is like two, two grade levels behind, um, that a parent might request for testing or for, maybe Kristen can answer that. I don't know. Do you I, know? I don't, I don't know that, that specific. Okay. All right, well. Statement. I haven't heard that one, so, okay. Kristen, do you know? Do you know? So a parent can request testing at any time, regardless mm -hmm. of where their child is functioning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where um, you might be thinking, uh, you know, there was there was once upon a time ago where, you know, we would look if kids were more than two years behind at looking at some um, different type of um, setting or instruction. But mm -hmm. we've since then shifted that philosophy to um, push for more inclusion mm -hmm. um, at this time. So that might be what you're, you're, you're considering. Well, I'm talking about the day, the old days, yes. way back when. Yes, when... that's that, Lorraine's smiling. That was definitely right. the philosophy back in the day. Yes, but okay. there's been, well, since been a shift but, but, recently within the last year or so. But my concern is that with this pandemic, I, I'm afraid that we're going to see many more um, outreaches for help and support, which might end up increasing our SPED total um, by probably another 10 or 20%. I'm just making an estimate. So we have to really watch that because that's going to play an important part in the budget. We have no control. We have no control over that situation, except that I see Todd. Todd's going away. He agrees with me. But um, that's what my concern is going to be about this budget. Um, I have one other question. and I know it's possibly Mrs. Pinozo could tell me. I, I know that you've reached out to the um, teachers union because they were interested in some kind of possibility of supplementing their their uh, health insurance. Did we get any reply yet or? Do, do you want me to answer that? So so I did reach out to, um, to Ms. Keller, the president of the SEA, and she was going to um, send out an email to her teachers um, mm -hmm. to see how many were interested in the um, uh, the age range of the teachers that were interested, but to date, I have not received her information. I will um, 
get back to her tomorrow. Okay. I'm, I'm just hoping that we can get something. I mean, we can't even consider something if we have no knowledge of all of the facts that, that support it or don't support it. So hopefully you will get something because I see Thursday's uh, budget workshop is a possible recommendation. So, okay, thank you. Continue. Unless there's any other questions about that, I just wanted to provide the board with the updated information and I wanted to explain it since I emailed it to them. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Todd who will speak to cafeteria and athletics. Mrs. Jolis, if your question is over, you may want to put your hand up. I love my little hand up. No. <laughs> there you go. Good evening, everyone. I just uh, started my screen share so you can see the spreadsheet. What I've done too is with Lori's help, I've sent out screenshots of this to your email system to help make it easier to read in case the screen is not working that well. So as we approach budget workshop number four, I thought I'd just reiterate to everyone, we here have done an incredible amount of work where we've included all principles and all pertinent parties to this budget. We've had many, many conversations, reviewed all the items, and we feel very strongly that we've approached this from a very prudent and conservative standpoint. So what I'm about to show you, just to reground everybody, I'm going to show where we were the first workshop, the second workshop, the third workshop, and I'm going to go over in a little more detail the fourth workshop for tonight. So as you can see my screen, our current budget baseline is $73.5 million. The first grouping is mandatory agreed upon cost increases for and per contracts in terms of salary, in terms of benefits. We also have two new major pieces in the IT world based on all of our investments for the 48,000. We have tuition cost increases coming from our external parties such as ACES and CES. To remind everybody, we've been in COVID for the last couple of years. So the most conservative approach that I could come up with was for our utilities budget, going back to use the numbers for electricity and water, et cetera, such that we have an increase over last year's budget. Again, things were pared down with the COVID. So that's gonna be an increase. Custodial supplies in terms of the COVID cleaning and sanitation, we saw that increase. So all said, that works out to be a plus 2.99% spend year over year for these mandatory pieces in our budget. Okay, budget workshop number two, we talked about the four board certified staff, one non-board certified staff. Then I walked everybody through the run rate and the methodology, and I agree with Mrs. Yolish. Uh, that we have to be very concerned about our growing special ed costs with regards to tuition and transportation. I'm not going to rewalk through the math tonight, but I just have these four line items here. So that's an additional 1.26 million on that grouping or an additional 1.72. Last week, we had Mr. Newman and Mr. Calhoun explain their parts and pieces. John had put together his walk, which you have from last email from last week of a 200,000 increase. I then presented with our partner Whitson's for all the non-functioning high-end commercial cafeteria equipment, which is non-functioning and really needs to be replaced, uh, the $83,750. So this bucket was an additional 283,750 for an additional 0.39%. And then the key thing tonight is, as Ken just said, we're going to approach these three pieces. So after a tremendous amount of discussion, reviewing line item by line item, each piece of our teaching and learning budget, we felt it was best to hold that at a 0%, no increase. We've invested a, quite a bit in our curriculum in terms of software and books, workbooks, et cetera. 
And we feel as though we are in a very good place for this year. So that being said, we're holding this to a no increase line item. And if I can interject, if, if I may, um, this zero that you see for teaching and learning, and I know Kristen can chime in any time, is actually a reflection of, of reduction for our budget. Um, this board committed to uh, the Wit and Wisdom program, committed to the Eureka Math program. We paid for those initial costs um, through grant funding, um, but we were all aware that that initial cost was a hefty cost that came with an annual fee. So we had to, we had to budget that annual fee to making that commitment, long-term commitment to those curricula. So the idea that we're presenting a zero number in teaching and learning is also an indication to you as a board, you need to be aware that we're making reductions within this department to sustain the curriculum that we have chosen. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry to interrupt. No, quite. And please interrupt anytime. So the next line item, as you can imagine, there was quite a turn down in our athletics spend for the past two years. Different things such as uh, athletic transportation, athletic uniforms, et cetera. So what we're doing here is this is an aggregated number. This is to get us back on as we're going into a more normalized world, uh, putting the transportation budget back to what it was in the 2019 year, getting us back to an equipment replacement run rate, as well as uh, football uniforms, other uniforms. The helmets in the football have to be reconditioned and we have seen a price increase there. We have also additional needs for other miscellaneous sports equipment, uh, we need to have more portalettes at the uh, events. And also we're looking at more staff travel. So all these parts and pieces as we're trying to put our program back into a more normalized, call it 2019 year, our expected increase here is $99,224. And Todd, I'm going to interject one more time just to support what you're saying. Um, for clarity for the board and for the public watching, um, this $99,000 um, request for an increase um, puts us back to leveled services for, for athletics. We're not asking to increase anything with athletics, but over the course of the past two years, we've made substantial cuts to the athletic program because um, several seasons, sports, and others did not run to the full capacity that it did um, due to COVID. So the $99,000 is not, we're not requesting to have additional um, sports products or anything, but more, it's a restorative number to bring us back to full capacity to run our sports programs as they had run um, prior to the, the setbacks we did and the cutting we made um, relative to the pandemic. Thank you, Doug. Absolutely. And I want to reiterate, it's restorative. This is not additive. This is getting us back to where we once were. Again, our transportation budget was cut exceptionally. The uniform replacement was put on hold. Um, also, other equipment replacement was put on hold. So those are kind of the major parts and pieces of getting this back into a uh, normalized uh, system. Uh, yes, Diane, I see your hands up. Um, does this eliminate pay to participate? Unfortunately, it does not. Okay, uh, just want to make sure the public knows. Okay. Uh, yeah, to repeat, that is a great question for everyone, for the board, as well as everybody listening. This $99,224 is just restoring what's called the general budget spend. This is separate, a separate line item, separate piece than pay to participate. The expectation in this budget is that pay to participate is going to stay in place. And those funds do help with paying our referees, with helping with other uh, certain equipment pieces. So pay to participate funds do get used. And so just repeat, this line item here is the general budget restorative dollar amount and pay to participate is a second piece and they work together to make sure we have a functioning 
athletic program. Yes, Ms. Kutash, I see you have your hand up. And I just want to make a point too, this does not include any of the um, previously discussed um, amend, uh, repairs to the track and field uh, features of the field. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Let me just clarify. Um, Mr. Calhoun and I are working on writing the bid spec, preparing the paperwork, and that will go out. And that is for the pole vault pit. That has been a, quite a discussion on, on previous meetings. That is not in this line item that you see on the screen. That is not in pay to participate. That is going to be truly a uh, documented bid that gets posted where then we'll receive bids and move forward separate and distinct from the general budget, separate and distinct from pay to participate. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, Todd, one more add on just because the, the, the statement here, uniform replacement. Um, so the board understands um, the district has always had a uniform replacement program where um, every four years, every team would rotate and have a new uniform so that no child in a four year span would have to wear the same uniform that has been worn by somebody else. Um, it goes through, we have a schematic where it covers all the different teams and all the different departments. So they're all on a schedule. For the past two years, we have not replaced any uniforms that was suspended. So um, this would put us back on track. The only uniforms that were replenished were replaceables. And I give an example, the swim team, we buy new every year. You know, the, the swim team gets new swimsuits every year. Like those type of things are replacements. Um, but when we talk about the football team and such um, and all other teams, the baseball, softball team, they are all on a uniform replacement schedule that has been suspended over the past two years. So we're off track by two years. This will put us back onto year one. We're not backtracking. Um, so we're still behind. We're just going to, by, by putting this increase, we'll put us back on schedule, as Todd said, that restorative to put whoever was displaced three years ago, they would get the new uniform. And then hopefully we'll get back online with that. So just to add to that, this is restarting that program. It was paused for two years. So this would start the next cycle of that. And then that would be in the budget a year from now for the next set of uniforms to be replaced. On this line item, are there any other questions or concerns that I could possibly uh, clarify? I don't see any hands up. Okay. That being said, so on the screen, the next part and piece, which is significant, is the cafeteria. So about two weeks ago, we were contacted by the state of Connecticut and we will be going out to bid this year. We have had a wonderful third party uh, management team in running the cafeteria called Whitson's. So we will be going through the state directed process. Myself and an assistant will be on a training session here come Thursday. We're gonna learn more about the specific process steps this year and we're gonna be going out to bid the way it looks. It is quite an intensive process. The state will give us certain terms and conditions. We will work through. We'll have worksheets to fill out for all of our cafeterias per each school. We'll supply that back to the state. They will then review it. They'll come back to us and have some questions or some directives, which then we will adjust to. And so, the, basically the contract will be built for the bid process. At that time, we will be going out somewhere, uh, I'm gonna say early to mid spring, and most likely we won't have an answer on that until the June timeframe. This is key. Uh, typically it's a one year contract with four renewals, thereabouts. And so in the past with the COVID, the state had given many towns um, a waiver. So that's where we sit with Whitson's, that's the process we're gonna be undertaking soon. So on this line, number 60, you're gonna see cafeteria general budget. I put a couple asterisks there. What is 
and where we are, we're trying to budget for this here on January 31st as a complete unknown as to what that contract is going to come in terms of a cost increase. What I did was I tried to capture as best as I could some cost increases for all the paper goods, which I've mentioned before. We've seen that go up 15%. Uh, this is somebody asked last time when I presented the non-functioning commercial kitchen equipment. This is the line also where we would do external third-party repairs to have them come in to work on the refrigerators, the steamers, the boilers, the chillers, et cetera. So I'm putting that back into a restorative fashion. So at this spot, this is the best prediction I have for right now with one major unknown, and we're not going to know it. And we go through this every, every number of years through the budget cycle. So this is nothing new or different. But when we are to go out to contract bid, most likely, as we all know, going to the grocery store, going to the gas station, the price of fuel, the price of transportation, the price of all food products has gone up. So I expect that we will see this uh, increase. And as we progress through the budget process and the bid process, I will be giving you that same information in future board meetings. That being said, for tonight's piece, teaching and learning, as Ken mentioned, is a no increase. Athletics is a restorative line item. Cafeteria is trying to capture the cost increases as best as possible under that. So this would be 282,974. When we add up all the line items from all budget workshops here in gray, which you also have in your email, you can see that's a total of $4,027,655 or a year over year increase of plus 5.48%. Again, plus 5.48%. Are there any questions? Uh, Todd, why don't you um, stop sharing the screen? Because I know Mrs. Kutash has a question. I don't know if you can see everyone. So if you. Okay, thank you. Yep, I will stop right now. Perfect. Yes, Mrs. Kutash. I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud here and I'm not sure where my brain is going with it. Um, I don't know if we have any projections on how, the, and the, these are two questions actually, how are cafeteria contracts expected to come in over what they currently are? Have we included that in the projection? I have a small cost increase there, but the second part is it's a complete unknown. I was at a Caswell meeting this past Friday and there were business managers from about half of the towns and cities within the state of Connecticut there. And usually under a normal run, run rate, a third, a third and a third go through this process, but because of the waivers, somewhere probably about two thirds are gonna go through this. There was quite a bit of conversation around this and everybody was talking about the cost of plastic cups, the plastic sporks, the napkins, the clamshells, all of that. And everybody's talked the same way about the increased transportation, decreased labor. So we have no guidance really at this point. Uh, everybody who sits in the same position with all their boards and going through this budget cycle has the same <laughs> concern. And I've given you the best advice and thought logic that I can based on the input I've just received. We'll again know a little bit more once we go through a couple rounds of the state of Connecticut training. But that's the so, best I can so, provide. So this Todd's time. increase that he's including is an increase that that could possibly cover the bid process. So that that's okay. kind of the estimate that we're 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 looking at right now. It's it's that's about now. it's about the best that I can provide. Yep. Thank you, Ken. So yeah, we're doing it based on the facts that he can find from Casmo and speaking to others um, since that process hasn't begun yet. So we already have obviously a line item budgeted for cafeteria. He's talking about the additional increases of what you're referring to. Do we know? Well, we don't know, but based on some research, that's his best estimate of what we may possibly need to increase to be able to cover the bid process. And, and the other part of my question, and, I, and I, I, this is where I'm probably more vague, a uh, number of districts are going on free lunch for all. Where do we stand in that? How does that affect the bid price? 
I, I'm just, it's swimming and I'm not sure what my question is, but maybe you can tell. <laughs> I, I could help with that. Uh, I just told Ken this morning when I first uh, saw him after last Friday's meeting. Part of CASBO is, is connected to the state of Connecticut in Hartford. And the great thing was we had a speaker who provided a preliminary answer to your question. And of course, he would caveat it three different ways from Sunday. But what it most looks like, and we're going to have to start considering and preparing for, is that the free lunches to everyone and the free breakfast to everyone is going to go away as of July the 1st. Mm -hmm. The children that are on free and reduced will stay, but this blanket to everyone for both breakfast and blanket to everyone for lunch, I'm going to use my words, most likely high probability is going away July the 1st. We're going to be hearing more about that probably in the next 90 days, but on Friday of this past week, uh, that's what we were told to get prepared for, expect, and then to communicate with the parents and the cafeteria staff. Okay, so if I can add to that, to some of the um, previous presentations we've had when we talked about facilities issues and, and such, um, and even the technology issues where we're talking about replacing POS systems in the cafeteria, you know, we, there's, there's a subsidy reimbursement from the federal government based on these free lunches now. That will stop. Then our, our income that we do to offset the contractual price with the cafeteria is all going to be based on the point of sales that we have yes. from students buying. And again, if we don't have workable cashiers to, to, to tr make those transactions, or we have service stations go down because refrigerators are broken and the heating stations are broken and we can sell less, that's less income that we will bring in being able to offset that cost. And that's the predicament that previous boards have gone under. When you've seen that audit with that whole cafeteria line item that, that seems to be rolling and has to be rectified, that was created as a result of the previous cafeteria supplier and, and our, that, at that time, the Board of Education's inability to meet the, the contractual obligations of what was gonna be sold at the point of sale. So we and don't want to get into that same predicament. And Ken, I'd just like to add, I want to re reiterate to everyone that POS system must be replaced. It's not a like to do. It's not a nice to do. It's an absolute must at this stage. It has to be changed. Again, I gave you a sample of the three there in the one school. One was completely dead, no power, no nothing. The second one, uh, the manager was rebooting after four reboots. It finally cycled up. The third one, thank goodness, was up and running. But can you imagine trying to push 200 kids through this and you'll have really one real functional one? The second one you're trying to reboot and the third one is not functioning at all? That POS, POS system has to be replaced. There's, it's just, it must be done. I, I and it, and it deters it. points of sale for, you know, because what we will always feed our children. We will always take down the numbers for those who have to buy lunch. But for there, there's a handful of students who still come to school with packed lunch from home and some money to buy, you know, a la carte items. Well, I'm not waiting in line for an a la carte item if the line is this long and I have a lunch sitting in front of me. So, and that's where we would lose points of sale and revenue that would help offset cafeteria costs. Amy, I think you were next. Hi, Ken. Um, I guess to me, these items seem um, to be, in my eyes, fall under capital, some of these items. Are your intentions, even though you're bringing them forward to us tonight, to leave them off to the side and sit down with the mayor and have conversations with him about these items that need to be replaced? Obviously, oh. he seems to be um, working with us on some other items over the years, and even now, even with things that you're pricing out, I would think that it would be more of an ideal situation because these aren't going to be ongoing costs every year that it be brought up in that fashion. I agree. And, and I think in, in transparency for the board, you need to know all possible costs that can fall under 
um, anything that we can alleviate from general budget requests that the city can commit to pay in other manners, we would be happy to take it out of there. So um, these workshops were to bring everything forward and then we're looking for direction and feedback from you as a board into how, how we can proceed. And by all means, we'll have conversations with the mayor or alderman or anything um, to say to, to be able to produce a recommended budget that we think is the best um, to present to the city. But yes, so that that is an absolute option that we would consider. Okay. Mrs. Yolish. Okay. Um. Uh. Can I just need to to ask Todd when you um are going out for these cafeteria bids, um. Previously, when we had to do so, we had a board member and a principal or an administrator on the on the team. Do we are we still going to do that? Do I need to look for for a board member to because it's I mean, yes. are you the, shaking the your answer, head? Yeah, the answer is yes. We're not at that point yet, but right. when we are going to um, because the bid specs have to be put out and then companies have to bid on it, then we'll go. And when we're at that point, then we will solicit from the board and look for directions to get a um, input a, as a whole. I know Mr. Skerritt has already submitted his name. We would love to be a part of the cafeteria bid process again. We'd love well, to have him. I, 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 I served on that committee with Mr. Skerritt. We'd love to have you. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's somebody else that would love to have the experience. You get all but... those nice cooked meals. No, actually, I didn't get to get any of those cooked meals. Maybe John did because it was near, it was very close to the end of school and many of the cafeterias were already closing up for business, so to speak. So we didn't really get, we did have, uh, we did have some presentations though. So uh, that was good, but okay. You'll just let me know when. We, we would let we, you know. We will. Yep. Thank yes. you very much. You're welcome. Good job, Ta Todd. Thank you. Was that it, Mrs. Jolis? That was it. I know. Put my hand. No, up. no, no. I'm just making sure. Um, I know. We we have another hand up. Diana. Um. Yeah. Just to piggyback on what Amy's saying about the capital, you know, shifting some items off of our operational budget into capital improvements. We just kind of as a reminder, we already have a five year plan of capital improvements. So by taking it off of the operational budget. You're going to shove it onto the capital, and that's going to really mess up our five-year plan. So I understand the logic behind it. Let's get the city to pay. But then we also have to go back to the city to pay for all this other stuff we have in the five-year. I see Todd saying yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul, I, I guess, is the analogy I want to make. If, you know, I may, just, if I may add, a lot of the things we've put before you, in my mind, are small ticket expenditures. Whereas the five-year plan is much larger. Yeah, like, yeah right, like, right. like I get it. Of, uh, and we months. know, and Todd, we know from a finance background that, and probably Carl as well, that, you know, that capital improvements you want to save for the big things, like the small things you kind of stick through the operate, like school, you know, the uniforms for the various teams and some of this cafeteria you know, pots and pans and things that you were describing, you don't necessarily want to put as a capital improvement. So, yeah. Completely agree. We need to have wow. a shower and a registry and have people sign up. There we go. <laughs> if that works and the money comes in, I'm happy to help get that uh, cafeteria equipment in. Mrs. Thank Romano, you. is your hand back up again? Yeah, I again, I like Diana piggybacking off of you now. I, I was calling it capital, but my point was like we brought thing, we bring things to the city, obviously, when we need help repairing things. So to me, these are small, you know, they could be small. Like if we if if John Calhoun and Ken is having, say, a, a monthly meeting with the mayor. And they're saying uh, every month they meet and they say, So what's going on? Well, our point of sale service, you know, is broken. We really need it. And you know, I, I would love that relationship to be that way so that these small little things get discussed throughout the school year with the city. 
just like how we brought up the track and field to them but at nighttime, seeing them at an event and they're like, send us the, send us, send it to us. So I feel like if we keep that line of communication open mm-hmm. with them every month, having these meetings, maybe these little things just get taken care of. So I'm saying capital, but I think that they seem to be receptive, but we just have to bring it to their attention and just keeping that, you know, hoping that that, that line of communication stays open. Understood. And, no, and that's, that's why how, I, I said capital, yeah. just meaning because well, I know they, they, they are receptive to helping us on things like this that don't need every year. Such as like the transformer, when the transformer right, right, the came transformer, up. The transformer, the, the track and field pole vault thing, right. All these little things they're, they're receptive of, but if they don't know about it, then how could they be receptive? So just, that was my thinking. Carl? Did you have- How you doing? Uh, right. Yeah, I just had a couple thoughts and and um, <clears throat> a couple of remarks, really. Um, just an overall observation: the number we're asking there, and I and I really like the chart you provided, Ken, about the student enrollment and the staff. It gives us good idea of what's going on. Uh, the chart that I have goes back a lot further; it goes back to two thousand five uh, in tracking student enrollments and staffing levels. Um, and that increase we're asking for is is higher than any increase we've gotten uh, in in the history that I have. Uh, just to put it in perspective, I'm not questioning uh, that we need any of it. I, I think we do, um, but it's also um, I don't like to go by memory. I have the the highest increase we've gotten in since 2005 was 2.6 million. And the highest percentage increase we've ever received is 4.55%. So this would be higher than both of those. And these are unprecedented times. I, I do understand that. Um, the other comment I wanted to make and just another observation, um, I know that the city charter was big debate and, um, and so forth and a lot of talk about it, but a couple of things that it had would have helped us right now. One of them, would have been taking all those Chromebook expenses that are in our capital plan, it would have separated them to a, um, a separate group that would just, a separate department that would be funded every year um, by the city uh, directly uh, for IT directly. So that would have been out of our capital plan and we would have been able to address these issues a lot easier. Um, and that was something that Mr. Anglais wanted to do. He wanted to do the um, do that, have that IT group or IT department. I'm not using the right terminology, uh, but it would have been individually funded. And the other part of the charter that would have helped us was the overall increase in the percent that the alderman can spend on capital per year. They are limited, uh, and Diane is right, and so is Amy. Uh, that we have a limited number that they could use by our charter. Uh, so that was another aspect. I know there was other aspects of the charter that I didn't want to you know, talk about, but those parts were would have helped us right now. So, um, Carl, know. just because just we're always looking to get information and data, if you were saying that you have data that goes back to 2005, I mean, that predates my time in Shelton. I, yeah. I would love to take a look at whatever you have. So I'll send you what I have. I, okay. I, and again, I don't... I, I don't know how accurate it is. It, okay. it, yours were in line with what I had. So Okay, great. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? A point more a point of order, Mr. Uh, Superintendent. Um are we going to have a general discussion on Thursday? Or do you wish all our input via email or both? Or what's what's the scenario? So I've been having some input from board members via email or phone call or whatever. I, I encourage that that still happens since um, we don't want to cause an illegal board meeting by having a discussion of an item that's not on the agenda because we don't have a, a, a budget to be presented. We do have two workshops left to, to work with it. Um, I'm hoping based on the information that I receive from board members, um, we plan, administration plans to meet over the next three days. Um, to Carl's point, we're, we're well aware of um, the percentage increases that, that this city has allocated in the past. 
we're also aware of, um, you know, these are unprecedented times. Um, we know the, the funding that the city has granted us uh, and the limitations that we have. So um, the increase that you see tonight is not necessarily gonna be the, the recommended budget that we will be bringing on Thursday to, as a recommended to be voted on. Um, but any input that any board member provides for me helps us synthesize um, that presentation that we will make for Thursday. But I'm also, and, and I will be having some conversations with Todd to be able to provide some type of, and I know the board has seen this in the past, a, a digital projection that we can work off of on Thursday to say, well, if we eliminated that, what does the percentage come to, to be able to come to some consensus and, uh, and, and make a possible vote on Thursday. I don't wanna rush the process, but I also um, don't wanna drag out the inevitable because as I talked about at our very first workshop, you know, this should be the easier of the two sessions when it comes to budgeting. You know, we, uh, to submit the request is one, to satisfy the budget when we get what we receive from the city is a whole nother budget time that we'll have in May. So um, I don't think we need to spend, I mean, if we need the two workshops, we're gonna use them but in the time allotted on Thursday with the two hours, having an electronic working document, opening up with a recommended budget start, um, hopefully we can come up with a consensus and, and, and make a recommendation on Thursday. But your feedback is appreciated. As I have said in my briefings to the board, several of you have either sent an email or a phone call or a text on some input. Um, I, I encourage that by all means, um, that would help administration as we work over the next three days in preparation for Thursday. Thank you. Because you know, I've been on the board 10 years and every time we do it, it looks different. Well, and that speaks to, and I've already had this conversation with Todd as well. Uh, Mr. Santafonte's, one of his recommendations is that we solidify a process that the board follows every year. And we're using this year as the outline of how we will do, you know, budgetary process from every year to come. And we'll make that a policy for the board um, based on Mr. Santafonte's recommendation. And then you won't have to worry about every year if it's going to be different or how we're going to do it. We'll all know how it's going to roll out. Thank and, you. And, and this year was all about simplicity to try to bring it, break it down the easiest way possible for understanding for you as the board member and our general public that's watching. Diana. Yeah, just in closing, and, and I agree, five and a half percent is, is very daunting giving the, the history um, over the years. But, you know, we've talked about this before. This is the cliff. The cliff, the cliff, not only is it coming next year, it's here this year, because when you defer, when we have to cut, when we don't get what we need, we don't update our cafeteria stuff. We don't update our tables. We, we don't get uniforms and equipment for the athletic budget. I mean, the cliff is here. Now we can't keep deferring because stuff is broken. We had, we need a new vehicle in the, what, what did John Calhoun say? 2002 was the year of some of our maintenance mm -hmm. vehicles. It was the dump truck. Dump truck. Yes. What? He's okay, got many yeah. people that are 20, 19, 18 yeah. years old. Th this is the cliff. The cliff is here and it's going to be bigger next year. So yes, five and a half is daunting, but this is the bed that has been made for us. And now we are lying in it. And as I mentioned before, we approached this presentation and all of our thoughts and analysis from a very conservative, prudent place. These are mostly must do's. You know, in, well, as we've gone through the different lines, I try to explain everything as best as possible. These things have to be replaced. As an example, when it comes to the cafeteria equipment, the POS systems, John's truck, and, and John's going to ask for another truck next year, and maybe, you know, two trucks the following year. It just depends. But many of his vehicles are at the end or beyond the useful life. And, and part of this process as well, you know, where we, what we see now, as far as realistic requests, what we present to the, to the city is also those talking points, you know, as Mrs. Romano said and everything, you know, we have those conversations. I meet with Mr. Anglace. He likes to see as well, what did we start with? What did we pare down to? What did we make the recommendation? So it gives them the idea of all of you as board members doing your job of not just turning over a certain number of requests, but making the tough decisions and working with the city. So it, it, all of our work in these past four budget nights creates the narrative for the discussion to be had with the city itself. Patty. 
Yeah, um, what I was, you know, to speak to what Carl said about unprecedented times, you know, um, we're not the only ones. Um, Bridgeport, I read when they did this, they came up with 18% increase, pared it down to like eight, <laughs> you know, um, you know, uh, Trumbull, Monroe, Stratford, they're all around where we're, we're coming in at. I mean, we're not being unrealistic, but we de delayed repairing things for so long, we, we have to do this, or at least we have to ask. So I think we have to bear that in mind. We're not out of line with others. I know we're this city, but we're not out of line. So just to let you know. I mean, uh, as superintendents, we speak to each other all the time about during the budget development. I, I know I can speak firsthand Monroe, our neighbors, a town very much like us. They, they put forth a, a 5.39% budget increase. Um, mm -hmm. Fairfield was 6.2, you know, so uh, a lot of the districts are somewhere between four, four and five. Not that I'm saying we have to be between four and five, but I'm just, it just speaks to that idea of, of what all districts are facing relative to, you know, the times that we're in, so. It's like my grocery bill. Going up. Hey. Carl. Oh, Carl. I, I just had one more comment because I'm I'm still a relatively new board member, only my second term. I just flabbergasted that we only look at one year at a time. So like even our capital, we kind of plan out, we kind of project. Um, and I know it's hard to project, but I think it would be helpful if we tried to project, give the city some idea where we're going three, four years ahead, of, you know, ahead of time. <laughs> I just, just just even even uh, I, I just think it's to take one year at a time is just so. Uh, Carl, I, I agree with you. I mean, obviously, we have to follow city charter in terms right. of the process no, I get one that. year at a time. One of one of the struggles that we've had though is when we have a plan in place, and you know, when we take two, you know, one step forward and then take two steps back, and then one step forward and two steps back, when we have to make cuts from year to year, it's hard to sustain a three to five year plan moving right. forward because that's it's always a moving target, you know, in that yeah. sense. So. Yeah. But, but I agree. I mean, we're trying to develop a, a, a plan, you know, on the academic side, you know, working yeah. on a district improvement plan. That's a three to five year plan in projection. So we, we have a, a focus in mind just getting us there. But and then again, who would have thought three years ago the pandemic would have happened? Oh, I know. So how do you it's plan crazy. for something like that? Yeah, all, all the best plans. Play, play yes. I yeah, mean, best like play even, plans. Yep. Do, do we have a study or any kind of projection or done? For like even just our student enrollment, do we, I mean, to me, it's it's almost potluck every every year, or every month. You know what our student enrollment is. Is there any studies done on, or any kind of projection that we so can do? Or? The the best projection I can give you is when kindergarten registration is 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 over, and and that right. that we're, we we're beginning that tomorrow. So right. you know we'll we'll be talking about that as the kindergarten uh, registration process. But Carol just raised her hand. I don't know if she wanted to add something to that. So thank you. Well, well we did we did fund an um we did fund a redistricting plan um when Dr. Cluet was superintendent and um there there were projections made um in that um redistricting plan. Um and so if the superintendent's office has that plan that might be of interest to, for you we, to read. We can resurface that fair, plan and get it and get it to all the board members. That's it was fairly plan. comprehensive. So yep. you may want to take a look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Any other Any, questions? Oh, sorry. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, just re just a reminder, uh, if you have any suggestions, any thoughts about uh, a number, final number, please um, get them to the superintendent and Todd. And uh, so his leadership team, including Carol, they can all look at it and hopefully we can come up with something um, for Thursday. And if not, we still have that, I think, the following Monday, right? Uh, I'd like Tuesday. 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 Okay. And, yeah. and again, when Thursday night, we'll open up with uh, recommended, and then and then it it'll be proposed for discussion. And based on the discussion, we can add, subtract, and go there, and then hopefully come to terms. You know, within our time frame uh, on Thursday night. That's that's the game plan. 
to, and and that that was the point. Um, Lori has sent out a uh, um, a letter to all the board members, um, reminding them that I, I really think it would be beneficial. And I'm not just talking about budget time. I'm even talking about for the future that we have a board representative um, to at one of at their meetings, so that if something comes up. Maybe you won't have the exact answer, but at least you could say, I'm going to take that information and I will find the answer to give, you know, so that we can get back to you. But I think it sends a positive, uh, a, a positive um, attitude that we are, we are looking to be transparent. We are looking to work with the Board of Aldermen and they were very helpful um, last year's budget. They did, they did come up and give us some money and, I, I can remember um, Mr. Anglis also telling the superintendent and myself that, you know, they're willing to work with us. They see we're being transparent. And I think that um, if, if you would be able to give up one, one, it's the second Thursday of every month. And even if we could have enough representation for February through June, that would be, I'm not even asking for the summer, but I think that you know, and then resume in September, October, I think it really sends a, a positive message. So please, um, if you have the opportunity, respond to Lori so we can get that that going. And I thank her for working on that for me. Without, if if, that, if yes, I could yes. just make a request, um, either Todd or Mr. Serenich or Lori, that screenshot tonight is difficult to print, but of this final proposal, maybe if we could have it as a separate document, that we can yes. print a hard copy to have in front of us? Yes, we'll, yes. We'll, we'll, if the latest, we'll get it to you first thing tomorrow morning. So you That's can see That's great, that's great. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Last call, last call. I'm looking for hands. Okay, <laughs> I just see smiles. Smiles are good too. All right, thank you um, for your participation, for attending. I know it's a lot of work, but you know what? That's what we're here for. I thank Todd and the superintendent and Carol and Kristen and everybody that worked to, and Lori, of course, to work on this budget and try to, I, I like the way it's been presented. It's easier in my, in, in my thoughts, it's easy to follow and I don't have to keep on flipping through pages. So I appreciate that. And I think that was a good recommendation. So thank you very much. And it is 7.03. Good night. Be safe. Stay warm. See you.